Hello, incoming freshmen, class of 2025. Just letting you know that you guys have a lot of time. You don't pick classes until early August, like right before the school year starts. In order to prevent the conundrum that is looking at the class courses that are available, I will provide a little bit of a rundown. What core classes are, how to choose them, and when to take them. Core classes are just the gen eds of UChicago. I can already tell that this video is going to be very long, so I will keep it short. Remember to subscribe because how else will you see my amazing UChicago content <laughs> if you're not subscribed? So consider subscribing because I am really cool. Back to the video. <laughs> so in order to graduate with any degree from UChicago, you need to complete 15 core classes. This is out of 42 total. It's also important to mention that incoming freshmen get to choose between taking three or four classes their incoming quarter. If you're trying to decide what you want to take, just reflect inward. I took four classes, it wasn't too bad, and then three is fine and no one will think any less of you. So as I run through this list, you'll notice that I'll say like one or two classes for a particular division of the core. This is because what you take is mostly up to you and what you personally find interesting. They don't really care how you fulfill this requirement, they just really want the 15 classes. Therefore, if you'd rather take a second class of art over another class of history, you can do so. And this is just to help the people that, you know, maybe like art more than history or vice versa. It's a bit confusing, but it helps people feel less trapped in the classes that they're being forced to take. Let's get started with the first one. So the first core class is Hume or Humanities, and it is kind of like your basic reading class. I can't talk too much about the specifics because each class varies so widely. In general, they are discussion style classes with a large reading component, and usually it is three five-ish page essays per quarter, which isn't too bad actually. This class is more or less guaranteed to first years. Pretty much everyone takes it, if not everyone takes it. I personally took Language in the Human, which was Mwah, beautiful. It's very heavy on the linguistics, papers, and readings in that field. There's also a writing seminar aspect of the class. So every week you meet with a PhD student in Harper Library and you'll talk about your writing style and like what a verb is. It's very draining, but you'll get through it. With Hume, most people take two quarters and then don't finish the sequence. This structure is a little bit different for pre-med people because their schedule is just so topsy-turvy. So they end up actually having to take full three quarters of it. I should just also mention the expectation is that once you are in a Hume for your fall quarter, you are in that same Hume class for the rest of the year. Like you're not allowed to change courses within the Hume core. The next core requirement is the arts and I would love to take one of those sometime soon. <laughs> the arts can be more or less whatever you want. There's music, visual arts, creative writing, TAPS, aka theater. One class is required, like I said, but you can, you know, drop something else and pick up a second art class if you so want. However, I will mention that getting an arts class, especially as a first year, is extremely difficult. I believe a preference is given to second years, but even I'm struggling to get one of these classes, so it's very, very difficult, as I said. Next, you will have to take two two to three classes of Civ or Civilization Studies. As you might suspect, Civ is history. However, it's going to be much more different than your average A-push history class. I always explain it to people as being more like a glorified book group. My class was a two-day week session. We discussed the readings and then there were, again, three papers that were about five pages long, depending on the teacher. So I took my Civ during the same quarters as I took my Hume, which meant a lot of reading. That is not necessarily normal. A lot of people that I know usually will save their Civ for study abroad because there are a lot of study abroad programs that will fulfill the Civ requirement. And I believe that they are trying to change this a little bit within the school. Nowadays, a lot of first years are beginning to take Civ, but it's still a little weird. Just to let you know, you can do so with study abroad. Uh, social sciences or SOCH is a three quarter core. This class is very, very similar to Hume in the terms of its structure, but it is more of a philosophy class. The expectation is that you take three classes in a row, no switching between the courses, all in one go. I am currently taking power. It's, um, it's interesting. <laughs> I'm not really a philosophy fan. We're all good, we're, we're surviving. What most people end up doing with Soch is that they'll do Hume throughout their first year and then Soch throughout their second year because Soch tends to have harsher grading because the expectation is that you learn something in Hume about your writing style and then you can apply your better writing style in Soch. However, I will say that as a first year, I knew a lot of people that were taking Soch and Hume at the same time. You know, you talk to them and you just be like, are you okay? Like there is so much reading to do between these two classes. That is all you will do. In these classes, you do a lot of bulky, bulky, dense, 
ugly reading. And on top of that, you do have the same three papers, five to six pages. In a situation where you're taking human social at the same time, they'll likely be due at the same time, and that'll make your life just a little bit harder. It's a bit hard to explain the mathematical sciences core math, because everyone's coming into Chicago with a vastly varying degree of knowledge of math, but I can speak pretty generally about it all. In the situations in which you'd only take one quarter of math, this would be a person who placed really, really high, but then didn't want to go into a major that involved math. Most people take two or more classes of math, I would say. Many of the majors, including econ, comp sci, physics, require that you take two or more quarters of calculus, so you can just expect that. In this situation, I would just suggest that whatever major you're interested in, going on to the course requirements website and seeing how many courses of math you would need to take because you don't want to take more math than you have to. <laughs> and like I said, it all depends on your placement. So I placed into Calc 151, which is Calculus 1, but then there are three tracks. There's 131, 151, 161, and 151 is kind of like the middle speed. They all learn the same thing, but some have a bit more help than others. Same math. So for the FISI requirement, it says you can take two to three classes. I would say that two is probably the most common. The only real tricky bit about taking FISI classes and bio core classes is that you need to know beforehand whether you're going to be a STEM major or a non-STEM major. Now I use the word STEM major quite broadly. I think in the website itself they just say science, but there are two different classes for these different types of majors. Within these two columns of majors and non-majors, as I usually say, there's actually a lot of choice. If you're going to major in physics, then you probably just want to take a physics class because likely that will get you out of some requirement for the major itself. However, if you are not majoring in a science, I took stars last quarter and this quarter I'm taking galaxies. But yeah, no, there's so many options. Chem, physical sciences, geophysical sciences, astronomy, really lovely classes. They design these like non-major classes so they can be more applicable to your major and they're a little bit easier. The only real thing is that usually you need to pick those two classes for FISI that relate to each other. They're usually in some sort of track. Like I said, stars, and galaxies are related, but if you're going to take a geophysical sciences topic that talks about the Earth, then likely you'll be forced to take one that talks about the oceans next quarter. I don't know. For bio, it's pretty much the same shtick. If you are majoring in the sciences, you will take some sort of like harder bio class. If you are a bio major, you will do a specific class for the bio major's core. And then if you are a non-major, you will pick some fun bio course. I can speak to the non-majors courses as an econ major. For the non-science majors, you will take a core bio class first. This would be a class like one from Fineshi or McNulty, great professors. After core bio, you would take a fun bio topics class of your choosing. There lots of cool ones. Um, physiology and extreme environments, y'all already know. Otherwise, that's about it. Of course, uh, huge asterisks are placed next to BioCore and FiSciCore because people are going to come in with some AP credit. But ignoring that, I didn't hate my classes for my BioCore, so you would probably enjoy taking them anyway. Last is the language requirement. Now, people are coming into UChicago with a very, very different degree of experience in their languages. My advice will change based off of how you're doing in your second language. This is how it usually works out. Uh, if you don't know any second language and you want to start fresh, you would need to complete three courses. 101, 102, and 103 of the language of your choosing. There are many. <laughs> this is a full year of language. But then once you finish that year, you are done. Otherwise, you can pass out of a language using an AP or IB exam credit. But if you did not do super well on your AP or IB exam, there are still placement tests that can get you a little bit higher in whatever language that you are interested in and or took those tests for. In the summer and winter, there are placement tests for any language. If you can place higher than 201, which is the class after 103, then you only need to take one quarter of said language. But yes, broadly, everyone needs to take at least one quarter of language, unless you're a native speaker of two or more languages, or that you got your education study abroad. In these cases, you can get a petition to not have to take another language course. However, the language departments are really awesome at UChicago, and I don't know how common petitioning a language requirement is. All right, that is all I have to say about the course requirements in Hugh Chicago. Hopefully you found them fairly educational. I tried my best to do my research because obviously I only know about my specific experience in taking core classes and I'm not done with them yet. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram or send me an email. Otherwise, I highly suggest that you go check out the course requirements website because it'll apply more to you specifically and your major. Just check the website, okay? And if you still don't know what you want to take, you can always pull a Reese Clem and go with Civ, Hume, Core Bio, and Math. I like them totally fine. <laughs> okay, I can be done talking now. Okay, bye.